Okay, so now for something a little more concrete, um, live coding derivatives. Um, okay, so we, we mentioned in between some of the slides that the derive, now I'm writing derive here for uh, the capital D on the previous slide, because derive I can write in Haskell. So it should take some function type to another function type, but it's not clear what to fill in for the question marks here. And I will briefly show three attempts, the third of which actually works. So the first, uh, we might say, let's, let's define, this is not in Haskell because it doesn't quite work. Let's define f plus g as deriv f plus deriv g. Well, this would require us to know if a function is a, a, a sum or not. And if deriv here has type r to r to r to r, where r is real numbers, r is real numbers, then this then we can't do pattern matching. So functions are at abstract values which we cannot take apart. We cannot know if the function is an addition or not because we would like to have rules like this and then perhaps rules saying f uh, squared equals uh, two times the f or, or things like that. So this does not work. Um, like I say, because functions are black box. So that they, we can't really look inside a function and, and figure out whether it's sum or not. And um, then we could say, okay, but we've now got something using limits and psi and so on. So we can implement psi here. So let's uh, shift this around and open the. So the type of psi here, well, it says fractional because I'm using division. And this is a type we saw before, um, psi, well, I should have copied the whole thing. So it takes a function of one argument and returns a function of two arguments because it now has added the age argument. So if we want to try to compute um, the derivative of squaring in this way, so we have squaring here, squaring of three is nine, the square of two is four, that's just this function. And then we can compute the psi of squaring. Well, that's a function. So this, if we want to compute its derivative at x equals one, for example, then we got another function. And if we put a small age, 0 0.1, then it says, okay, the derivative is roughly two. So we, have, we, we can try here. Try with smaller and smaller Fs, well, H. So we, we, if we collect these values, then we can say this was one case that's equal to 2.1. Uh, let's um, add one decimal place. Ah, oh, this gets this gets better. Um, let's let's put these just in the list. So this is hinting at that the, the limit may actually be one, uh, but maybe actually be two. So here I got even closer and even closer. Let's, let's take the exponential notation. So one to the power of minus five, one to the power of minus six, seven, eight, Okay, it's, it's on the other side, but it's still very close to two, nine. Maybe we can get it exactly two if we go sufficiently far. 12, oh, oh. Now, maybe I should stop here and, and see if you notice what's happened. So here we got one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. Here we only got three zeros. So if we be serious here and computing a limit, we should let epsilon be as small as possible. So we should continue. Oh, we, we sort of find some interesting behavior here. Maybe, maybe the limit isn't two. Uh, 13, 14, 15, 
16. Oops, the limit is zero. Ah, it's stable, it's zero. Well, I guess, so as, as you see here, this will approach to for a while. Uh, then diverge, well, to zero, actually. So why is that? Well, this is due to limited precision. So we can't really compute the derivative, the exact derivative by using this age. And it's not obvious what age, I mean, why? Why did it turn around somewhere here around 10 to the power of minus 10 or so? It's not clear uh, what is the best epsilon to use. So perhaps uh, try to optimize in the age size. But it's not obvious because we don't know what the, if, if it had been some other function than squaring, we would not know what the true answer was. So maybe we would say, oh, actually, we haven't found the right number two. Uh, maybe the right number is zero, or maybe the right number is something 2.2 .2 or something like that. So while Psi is useful for testing and useful definitely for the theory, it can't really be used for computing derivatives. So here comes the point where we have to give uh, up when it comes to semantics, so functions, and we have to go to building a DSL. I will call it fun exp or, well, actually, okay. Could you decrease age until Psi gives the same result two iterations in a row? Well, possibly, but I don't think it will. And also if it does give the same result in two iterations in a row, it's not obvious if it just has temporarily stopped changing. And if you would increase it or decrease it even more, it, well, it might continue going down. Or, or changing. So it, it's, uh, no, we, we can't really know. For a, for a general function, which we know nothing about, we don't know how to determine how close we are. I mean, if we really have to, we can make some guesses, but it's it's not obvious. And and it's it's not going to be a sort of, it's going to be have a limited stability if we want to, to compute it. So let's instead try to see if we can define a syntax data type. So this, this uh, is in the pattern of saying we want an evaluator from syntax to semantics. And um, let's see what kind of syntax function. I, I will call it fun x here instead of syntax. Uh, syn f fun x. Okay. And uh, I will give just a few cases. So we know that we want to encode squaring as a function. So let's let's load this uh, file, okay, and, and see what is the data type fun exp. Well, a fun exp is only the function squaring. Well, we know there is a function that we call the double as well. Let's let's call it twice or something like that. So squaring and twice and maybe constant uh real let's see if this is in scope yes so now we at least have the three functions that we had as examples so squaring doubling and constant two so if we have this as a dsl so our domain specific language can handle three functions those are the three functions then we can definitely compute derivatives so we can say derivative of squaring is any suggestions? Well, it's not two times. If I write two times here, it will say there is an error because the type of derivative here, I've said it takes a fun exp and it returns the fun exp. So this actually should be part of eval. So eval of tv should be two times. And eval of squaring should be exponential with two. Um, uh, now let's see what happened here. Yeah, so the, in the derivative case, it may anyway. This should be twice. So the deriv derivative of squaring is twice. And if we continue derivative of twice, that's going to be 
the well the constant two function so c2 and if we want to compl complete this one i also need to know how do we compute the derivative of some other constant than two This is not finished yet. Z zero, yes. Why is it complaining? Okay, now it works. So okay, so let's let's see the derivative of squaring. Well, uh, we don't have a show instance. Deriving show. Okay, deriving derivative of square is twice. And now you should say, okay, well, we could have written whatever here, and if it was wrong, it would be wrong. But so the, the interesting thing that we have suddenly gained by making a syntax for it is that we can compute syntactic uh, derivatives. We can really match on the format on, on what kind of thing we've got in our hands. Now, as you might imagine, this data type for, for functions is a little bit limited. We need some other cases than just these. And the most important of those, I think, is addition. So add fun exp fun exp how should we compute the derivative of add well expression one and expression two whoops yeah found a hole with the uh, some relevant matchings okay so the suggestion is derive e1 plus derive e2 let's see uh, okay it doesn't quite like it because it says it doesn't know how to do addition any suggestions how to fix that uh, in the easiest way yeah add derive e1 derive e2 remember these are just syntax trees there's no no instance for them yet and now we can try uh, what's the derivative of add square and twice okay so it's add twice and constant two so that seems reasonable uh, this means that it's probably now to be able to test if these things evaluate the way we want to we also need to extend the eval function so what's the eval of add e1 e2 How do we add up two expressions? At least we can we can say, um, okay. So we, we got the suggestion: here, eval e one plus eval e two. Okay, it says no instance for num sem f. So what is this? What's the type of eval f one here? Or oh, eval e one. So the type there is sem f. And the type sem f is the same as real to real. So these are actually both both these um, eval e1 and eval e2 are functions. So now is the, where we need this o plus f and g, uh, which takes two of these and combines them. So let's define it. Um, well, sorry for the extra arguments here. O plus, if we have an O plus, this would be solved. O plus eval E1, eval E2. So what is e, O plus doing? Well, we had it on the, on the jam board. It took two functions, F and G, and now I'm writing it prefix instead of infix, just to be extra clear. And it should be a function of x. Whoops, what happened over there? Uh, it should be a function of x two, and then we remember it was f of x plus g of x. No, what did I do? Reload. Okay, now at least it seems to type check. Uh, so what does eval of? So we had this example. Uh, actually, let let's let's define the example we had before. So e one was squaring the addition of squaring and twice. So this sort of 
it would be sort of x squared plus two times x. Whoops. It would sort of correspond to the function that takes an x and returns x squared plus two times x. So let's see if that works. So add, so eval of e1, well, that's a semantic thing. So we can apply it to one, for example. Okay, and now it crashed because I've got multiple declarations of e1, okay. Okay, so this is three. Does that work with what we assumed? So one squared plus two times one. Yeah, that, that should be correct. If we check for two as well, so now it's two squared plus two times two, that's eight. Three squared is nine plus two times three is six is 15. Okay, so we have an add and we can also evaluate the derivative of E1. Okay, and then it complains non-exhaustive patterns in function eval. So what is it that is not yet defined in this which case we can look at deriv e1. Do you recognize which case is missing? So notice we got squaring, that's the first, we got twice, but we haven't got the constant case. So we need an eval of constant c. And what should that function be? which should be right-hand side here. Yeah, const c. Okay, with an underscore removed, that should work better. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Um, just to line things up a bit. So the squaring functions is translated to the square, and the squaring syntax is translating to the squaring semantics the twice syntax to twice semantics and the constant syntax to the const function. Remember, this has type real to real. So the const function, if I take information about const, it's, uh, well, it's more general, but it, if, it, if we applied const to one argument, const one, and then we apply it to two, we will get one. If we apply it to hello, we'll also get one. Okay, so you can see that we are, if we can express functions as um, syntax trees, then we can also compute derivatives on syntax trees. And then at any point, we can choose to exit to the semantics using eval. And there is a specification that should correspond. So specification, the mathematical derivative of eval of a syntactic expression should be the same as the evaluation of the derivative of the expression. So if we take eval e, we get a function, we can take mathematically the derivative, we can't do it in Haskell, but on the other end Haskell, we can take the syntactic derivative and then evaluate it. So if we want to prove correctness of this program, this is the thing we should check, that this uh, equality holds. And I will not do it here because I would like to add one or more, uh, one or two more cases. So we we got a bit of a strange start to this. We got started with squaring and twice and constants, but the most common uh, or sort of the the base function that you want to model is actually the identity function. So we could call it id here, and evaluate id as just being the identity function. And then we would also need to add the derivative of the identity function. And what is that? So it's a syntactic derivative of the function which always returns, well, the derivative of, of the function which returns itself. Any suggestion? Const one, yes, so C one. Exactly. So actually, it, it, is, it is perhaps the, the sort of functional programming name that would be most useful for it. But in expressions, it's probably better to call it just x. Because then we can write expressions like, let's go to E2 here. Uh, 
whoops, e2 equals add x, x. So this x here is just a symbol. It could be called hello or, or Kurt Olson or, or whatever. Uh, but we decide that its semantics is the identity function. And that basically means that it acts as the variable case. As a variable case in the data type with only one variable. So what we've seen here, uh, which is also described in more detail in the book, that fun exp is a syntax, a DSL for one argument function expressions. And if we have that, then we can we can then compute the syntactic derivative. And that sort of is the key because that was the topic of the day. Uh, and then, so let's move this to where it belongs. Fun X is up here. And then, then at any point, translate to the semantics sort of real functions. Oops, functions. Okay, isn't the more general case a to the power of b? Then if we have b equals one, we get a to the power of one is x. Yes, well, I think to the power of, I think also squaring and, and so by the way, twice is probably now obsolete. Uh, at least if we, we can express it using x, uh, but we probably need multiplication as well. So you can choose different base combinators here. I mean, one natural one would be multiplication of e1 and e2. And then we need an O mol with the same arguments, which I actually, it should be sufficiently easy to define in just one minute, because the only character we need to change is this one. Not in scope, okay, we also need to add it to the data type. So, um, sorry, uh, what? I didn't save and then reread. Okay. So now if we have multiplication, then we can define things like x to the power of, I mean, we can define a function actually, power, which takes an expression, so a fun x and an int, or at least a natural number, and then returns another fun x, which uses, I, I will not define it here because we've got no time. But it's a useful exercise, exercise to, to write what is called a monomial to x to the power of n for some uh, whole number n, and so on. You can e extend this with uh, with um, other ideas. Could be the sine of a fun exp and the cosine of a fun exp and the exp of a fun exp, and so on. So that this is the argument to it and so on. And these examples are, are coming later in, in later weeks of the course. But the, at this point, I'll just comment them out. So make sure that the code is, whoops. I thought I commented them out. Uh, is still complete for these. But it's not quite complete because I haven't added the, the deriv, uh, derivative case for multiplication. But as you see, what I wanted to show was the pattern that at some point, one can use mathematical definitions, but then when implementing it, one often has to have a syntax. So this is a concrete example of a syntax, but for something rather abstract, which is functions of one argument. But if we have that syntax, it's easy to translate its semantics, but also easy to compute the derivative. Space needed there. Okay, that was all for, for this lecture. There is an exercise session in 14 minutes. Um, where you will see lots of other interesting examples. Thanks, bye. Yes, we have to do the multiplication case as well. I'll, I'll upload the, the results, but it's also a good exercise. <laughs>